welcome to this episode of Artisan Lab from the CoLab Studios in Clearwater, Florida. I'm executive director and podcast host, Christina Baker, and I am super excited to share today's guest with you. So let's jump on in. Today we're chatting with classically trained cellist Elizabeth Lushko. Elizabeth, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Pleasure to be here. Goodness. Um, I was introduced to you by a mutual friend of ours, mm -hmm. and I jumped on your socials and looked at YouTube and tried to soak up everything that I could, and I was immediately struck with, um, I'm not worthy, uh, we're <laughs> oh. the talent that you have provided to the world is quite astonishing. So. Oh. That's so nice. Thank you. We feel very, very grateful to have you in our space. So we wanted to take this opportunity for our listeners and your followers to kind of dig a little deeper, get to know you um, in preparation for your event here at the Collab Studios uh, at December 2nd. Mm -hmm. We're all looking forward to that. The tickets have been selling steadily. Oh, excellent. If you're watching this and it's before December 2nd, uh, 2023, get your tickets now because they're they're going pretty uh, pretty quickly. So let's kind of jump back a little bit and get to know you. Uh, where were you born? I was born in Oklahoma City. I don't have much of a recollection of anything about Oklahoma. I come from a military family. My Both of my parents were in the Air Force, and we were stationed there briefly when I was born. And yeah, that's all I know about Oklahoma. And but, then what happened? Where'd you move from there? New Hampshire, a little while, I think Nebraska, Kansas, all very brief. Yeah, but mostly upstate New York, Plattsburgh Air Force Base, right near the Quebec border. That's where I spent the majority of my childhood. And that's where I got started with the cello and all things music, really. Okay, so what drew you to the cello specifically? And how old were you? I was in the fourth grade, I, so I guess nine years old, and we had an option of what instrument to pick uh, of the string ones, and I just thought the cello was so cool, and I just wanted to play that instrument. Plus, I didn't feel like standing in line getting sized up for a violin in addition to that, but I said, well, the cello is really awesome anyway, so I'm going to go with that, and that was a couple of years ago, and I'm still doing it. <laughs> just a couple, <laughs> right. Um... So you got, was that in the public school system? Yes. Okay, which is so amazing because that's how I got my start into my instrument, the drums as well. It was that first uh, initial public school engagement that really fueled the um, fire to, keep, to build on that. Uh, so I, I just love hearing that when somebody gets their start in public school. Nothing against private school, <laughs> but I'm glad to see those programs, you know, still flowering today so um okay so that's fourth grade obviously cold weather um very cold lead to long practice hours were you did you love to practice or how did that go for you i think there were certain things that i really enjoyed practicing and other songs or exercises assigned by the teacher I'm just like, no, I don't like this, so I'm going to maybe run through it once and then go back to the stuff I like, which is what I think got me into composing and improvising, because I like to do my own thing yeah. with the music. I mean, granted, there's a lot of awesome classical stuff that's out there, but to have the opportunity to be a original and creative and write my own stuff that's not quite classical, not quite jazz, I don't know really where it my stuff would fit. I I like to do a little of both. Absolutely. But yeah, there was some long practice sessions when the cold weather, when it was like 20 below, like not even like real feel is 20, like it's actually 20 below. You see on the thermometer, like, oh, you know, staying in, yeah. playing some Bach today. <laughs> yeah. So as a nine or, or 10 year old young woman, what were, do you remember your influences at that point? Uh, I was always a big fan of Yo-Yo Ma. I started listening to his recordings right around the time I started the cello, and I actually got to meet him when I was 13. I was at a concert in Saratoga. He was performing, 
And my mother and I, I don't know how we did this. This is back in the day. We just ended up walking backstage. No one stopped us. We said, oh, is, is uh, Yo-Yo Ma around? Oh, yeah, he's, he's over here. And we went over and spoke to him and got to meet him. It was really an awesome experience for a 13-year-old to have. I still have the little autograph picture. It's in my practice space. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah, it was, a, it was a really cool experience. So moving on, did you guys have middle school or junior high? Junior high. Yeah, okay. It was okay. junior high slash high school. The whole school district up there was a K-12 to oh, district. Okay. So I started in fourth, and then I think, was it seventh grade? You moved to the other building and yeah. continued on with the orchestra program. And then I got into the jazz band program in high school, played the electric bass. So I, I do that as well. Okay. So that was your first taste of the electric bass. Yes. Yeah. Um, and how did your parents handle all of that? Were they like super supportive? Were they pushy? How would you gauge them? They were super supportive. I was always able to get a ride to lessons, music camp in the summer, any after school program. So I was very fortunate that I had parents who were very supportive of me. And that was yeah, that was obviously very helpful at getting me where I am today. So thank you, Mom and Dad, yeah. for all that help. So at that point, it sounds like, so who was in the military, your mom or your dad? Both, actually. Wow. Okay. So at that stage in your life, sounds like they were stationed somewhere permanently or semi-permanently, I guess. Yeah, it, it was pretty much uh, you stopped stationed moving. there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's been most of my childhood up there. Okay. That's cool. And then, so high school, jazz band, did you do that all four years? Uh, yes, I did. And um, orchestra? Jazz band, orchestra, chorus, uh, two youth orchestras. Oh kept busy. You played a lot of music. I did. It kept me very busy. Yeah. And, I mean, being a, uh, a band nerd myself, like, that becomes your family, right? Like, all of those people, you just, it's a super bonding experience. Yes. I, I still have friends I keep in touch with from youth orchestra, summer camp. Yep. That's cool. And do you guys, do you guys follow each other? Oh, yeah. What are some of them doing? I think a lot of people went into music education, but also just a lot of other fields as well and entertainment and otherwise. Gotcha. Okay. So after high school, what happened? I went to the Crane School of Music and studied music performance. After undergraduate school, I kind of put the music to the side for about a year or so, just needed a break. I was working in a bank and I was a teller and someone came up to me. I recognized the person. He was a saxophone player. I said, oh, I'm familiar with you and your music. I've seen you around. And he said, oh, I have a, a free jazz band that I play in. You should come by and jam and hang out. So I brought my cello over, started doing some improvising, playing some Coltrane and Gershwin and all random different types of jazz and that's where I think my improvising and more alternative styles of playing really started to happen and that was a really good experience. We released an album. Uh, the band was called Celebration Free Jazz. I met one of my friends who played guitar. He and I started a duo afterwards so we would play together separately and yeah, that's where it all began as far as the, the non-classical stuff. So I was thankful for that chance encounter at the bank to kind of get back into everything because I really wasn't feeling it for a little while. And it can inspire you in a second when you get with the right people. On the Absolutely. Right you just get right back in there and then you get that high, you know, of playing with someone that you connect with. And the connection is very, very important when you're playing with, well, you've played with bands, so you know how it is a duo, a band, even a, a quartet or an orchestra. You have to have a good vibe with everybody that you're playing with. Otherwise, it, it just doesn't make sense on a musical level. And really up, up here, it's a little off. It becomes force, mm -hmm. right? Instead of flowing. Yeah, I like force instead of flowing. It's almost like doing chores at that point. Yeah, like, it's like, well, I have to do it. <laughs> do it. We can do this, but I'm not like yeah, I'm super connected to it. Okay, so um, bank teller, and then after that, oh, so you're a teacher mm -hmm. now. I was a teacher. Um, I taught music in New York City for 
a number of years before I moved here. I did choral music, some guitar classes, uh, piano music. It was, it was a very good experience. But I, right now, I'm yeah, I've gotten more into the freelancing, the performing aspect, the composing, so I can teach part time and perform more because when you have a full teaching schedule it's, mm. it's oh you have summer off you have weekends off it's a very consuming 10 months of the year you get to put everything into it so now I teach three days a week and I perform a lot more actually more than I did in New York City especially post-pandemic so things yeah. have been picking up here with the orchestra the quartet my solo stuff very very thankful for that how is it, how is being here in the musician pool differ from the New York City pool? I feel like in New York City, when you want to perform in a place and you approach someone, either a manager or whoever directs the talent, the first question often is, well, how many people can you draw? How many people can you bring to our place for your show? That's the first question. Whereas here, I don't get that as much. And that's kind of nice. So you like, oh, we already have a crowd, so you can bring your people. But we, have, especially at restaurants, they already have like, so many tourists. And it's kind of nice because it's not your same 10 people that hear you all the time. It's new people that you can reach out to and connect with and show them what you're playing. So it's, it's nice in that aspect. And I will say, although there was a com sense of community in New York City, it's such a big city. It's very easy to get lost. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, here, I've, I've met a lot of people, a lot of artists and fellow musicians, entrepreneurs, small business owners. Everybody has just been so supportive. And I, I just love that. Even with the musicians I play with, I was offered a gig the other day. I couldn't take it, so I passed it on to another cellist who was able to take it. And then I'll have somebody else say, oh, I can't have this uh, performance happen for me. I'm busy that day. Would you like it? So there's not really any competition in that sense. It's nice because everybody's just sharing. Exactly. Um, and are you playing with an orchestra now? I play with the Tampa Bay Symphony. We perform in Tampa and in St. Pete. We're actually doing four concerts a cycle this year in New Tampa, uh, the New Tampa Performing Arts Center, the Straz in Tampa, and the Palladium in St. Pete. So we've had a very busy schedule. We just finished our first cycle for the season. It went really well. Well received. Yes. Good time doing that. Oh, yeah. It's always fun. Looking forward to continue. Absolutely. Well, that's cool. Where else can people catch you? I have been working on getting myself out there more as a soloist, as a looping artist, and a cellist. I am play I believe my next show coming up as a soloist will be at Cage Brewing Company in St. Pete that'll be next Wednesday at 7 30 I'll be playing a lot of my original music there cool. and I think after that a lot of private events you know the holiday season yes. a lot of private stuff going on exactly that's tis the season mm -hmm. for sure so let's talk about your style a little bit more okay Describe to me as if I had no idea who you were or what you play. All I know is that you play the cello, and I am a cello fan. And what's your style? Oh, that's a good question. I never thought of that. Um, someone described my style as modern cello. I guess that I kind of like that. It has like an 80s kind of vibe sound to it, maybe. <laughs> I do play a lot of 80s music, cover songs. I rework them and put my own spin on them. So I guess modern cello would be. Very cool. Nice. And I know you mentioned being a looping artist and sometimes people know what that is. Sometimes they get the wrong idea of what that is. Can you elaborate on your style of looping and your process? Well, I have a looping pedal. It has four different tracks that I can record and I will play my cello, I'll record something, then I'll just play another track over it. I'll take away and add and delete in real time live as I feel the sound needs it because you don't want it to get too busy. Mm -hmm. Someone came up to me, I was playing on Friday at an event, and he said, oh, that's all you playing, all those different tracks? I thought there was a, a boom box back there. So no, that's the looping pedal, that's all me. So it's just me playing into the, the tracks and they just keep repeating. 
So, so you can get that many unique sounds going and to so make them live and still they all fit together well. And, and that's also difficult because each venue is different. Mm-hmm. Right? So you really have to feel the room. Absolutely. Accordingly to that. It's all about reading the room. So it depends. Some places, if I played my original music, my improv, jazzy style of music, they probably wouldn't want me to come back because people might not want to hear that with their dinner. They want to hear maybe Elvis or maybe some 80s music or 90s music. And, you know, cover cover songs are fine. I do, I do enjoy playing them, but I really like playing my own music, too. So I'm very grateful for the opportunity that you've presented for me to share that. So thank you again for that. So happy to have you. Um, where's the best way for people to find you, get a little taste of your music, best way to connect with you? I am on Instagram. I am not really tech savvy when it comes to social media I'll be honest but I do post uh, some video clips and show updates on there if you go on there Elizabeth G cello all one word you'll you'll find me Elizabeth G cello that's that's a good one um and YouTube I know you have some stuff on there I don't have my own channel that's other people have put my shows on there so that's just out there from so many years and so many different collaborations so I'm I'm out there <laughs> you'll find me. I know people are going to want to hear more and more so um, I'll just go ahead and ask for the masses maybe you could do some more on Instagram just little blurbs here oh yeah shorts little like 15 30 second up to a minute long things so we can get a taste of your vibe and your talent. Well, that'll be my homework for this week. That's it. The teacher gets homework. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so, well, I think we've covered everything. Is there anything more you want to kind of let our listeners know and our watchers know what what you're all about? No, I, th- I think that just about covers everything. So thank you for having me. It was a pleasure being here and my very first podcast. So uh, this is, great. thank you. Bravo. Your performance skills have paid off in, in other avenues. Oh, well, thank you very much. All right, y'all. Thanks for watching. And uh, we will see you soon. Again, Elizabeth Bushko, get your tickets for the collab event December 2nd, 2022. And you can reach out to our website, www.b-co-lab.com. We'll catch you next time. Peace out.